Here it is, another Cascade Trekker adventure. Okay. This, I guess, is called Toolbox Trail. And this is what I was looking for. And we've got serious rain, like, everywhere except here. Alright, so I, I want to set up a camp somewhere close. Those big trees down there look fantastic. Okay. Chalice National Forest. This is the uh, North Fork of the Big Lost River. Just, uh, just in these shrubs over here. Very beautiful water flow over here. Uh, August 5th, we're dealing with rotating monsoonal uh, rain weather patterns. Uh, there was a, a break to get in here today. Hey, look at this beautiful sun right now. Just back in this canyon over here is the Toolbox Creek Trailhead. Uh, it, it's going to go up into the Jim McClure wilderness. But I'll tell you what, it's a great feeling right now to be here. Just fantastic. Here's my overnight sanctuary right here. It's going to be under this tree, between the shrub and the tree. Again, this is, this is the beginning of a, a potentially 10-day outing with two focal points of uh, backpacking uh, trips. All right, I'm, I'm working again with the uh, ultralight, semi-ultralight North Face Ranger Pack. This, this performed flawlessly last time. Uh, initially with all the weight in it, I, 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 I was compelled to carry most of all my food on that last trip for fear of bear incursions. Again, the sleeping pad and the tent, and if I uh, can't squeeze the rain gear in, it goes on the outside. So those items are on the outside, everything else is on the inside. And it, it worked great. Gonna talk real quick about the food. Okay, so on this trip, I'm thinking I can leave partial food in the bear can near the trailhead. I brought uh, this cloth bag, which I wish it was smaller to carry the produce in, which, uh, that's a large amount of produce, but again, I'm looking at 10 days out here with no resupply. Real quick, I've got some perishable items I'll go through first. Three hot dogs, I'm going to cut in half for six meals, dinner meals. Here's a, a block of hard cheese, which I'm not sure if it will stay well enough in, in the bear can over this initial period. So the produce, I have nine pieces of fruit. I wish I had one more apple, and that's okay. And I have, I have 11 pieces of produce, four tomatillos, and seven small sweet peppers. Uh, I'm going to try to split that up between this initial backpacking trip and the second one that I hope to uh, acquire. Fig Newtons, this is a great snack which I've, I've, I've been missing. I've, I've, last time I wanted something sweet. The closest I could get were my cranberries. This bag of combos is inconsequential. So the, the bear can now has 10 Slim Jim and cheese sticks, long ones. I've got a, a noodle, 
uh, package in there and ramen and spices for dinner coffee tea Powerade I've got a uh, breakfast bars I'm continuing the breakfast bar regime uh, 10 of these for each morning uh, trail mix peanuts and cranberries for snacks and uh, latter dinners and uh, flaxseed corn chips and that's that's it along with some garlic for my dinner the last thing to touch on is this weather pattern here we are August 5th and yes I've experienced heavy cold weather in mountains at, at this time of year even though you might think it's the middle of summer it's a tricky time it's a tricky place for me to be to balance between heat and cold we had mountain tops get snow in this last week with uh, the rain my guess is I'll experience rain every day on this trip uh, I'm prepared for it because this last trip I took I worked that rain gear perfectly it was solid except for those boots and uh, this time I've put uh, some snow seal on the outside to help protect them uh, staying warm on this trip I've bounced back up to the heavier uh, down bag it, it squeezes into my stuff sack with my extra clothes just as as well as the other bag and so I'm not going to be cold at night I'm not going to worry about being cold at, at 5 in the morning okay it was a, a long wait for that sun to break up these clouds towards the east. Uh, it's chilly here this morning. I didn't didn't want to get out of that bag. Here it is, the trailhead again. And what a what a beautiful morning. This is a a good omen. I think for this adventure. Holy moly. Finally ready. The bear can is hidden back there. I took the bags off the bike. They're going to be hidden back there. I did a food switch. And I've been here long enough for all these clouds to build. But that's okay. I'm ready and I'm heading up. This is, uh, it's a little thick in here, so I'm making noise. Uh, I don't want to see the bear. And uh, usually when you see the bear, it's like when you least expect it. The trail is well worn by uh, equestrians, easy to follow, and uh, not so steep. I still have the creek down here and my plan is to load up with two liters before I continue up to the top and that way that way I can camp anywhere regardless of uh, if I have water or not And I'm seeing some nice old trees back here. Makes me happy.
there's three or four or five or more old growth trees all in here. It's amazing. I'm thinking the creek just starts over here somewhere. However, I've seen uh, many wet spots and a lot of it uh, to have to hike around. There's the trail over here. And I think I'm close to the top. Well, I'm getting up here. Here's a Here's a warning sign here. That's relatively fresh. There's still color and meat on the bones. This was disturbed here. Well, keep going. Gonna keep going, see what's around the corner here. Jim McClure, Jerry Peak Wilderness, Salmon Chalice National Forest. Here's the boundary, and there are four trails two here. One here, and one going down, but no marking, no markings at all. Well, it's time for a snack break. I guess this will do here. Yeah, it's still just right on the edge of the wilderness up here trying to figure out logistics had a brief shower kind of shot me down a minute there's only one really good thing about this sign and it's a marker for me to know where to go back down to the motorcycle. There's no other indication as to which trail is which. Now I'm pretty sure this one right here on the right is the one I wanted to take and it uh, it goes for about four miles rolling along the top at, at, at two miles it climbs a peak and then drops back down that was my plan and uh, I guess I'll still go for it but the thing is I've got a little under two liters of water with me and it's gonna take I don't know, it's just a logistical problem now with water and which way to go. The, the other thing is that it's all kind of rolling and there's, there's no real true indicator as to which canyon is which. I just feel it, it'd be real simple to get lost looking for water. The other thing too is I don't want to get zapped if, if they start to rumble and spit out lightning. You know, uh, it's very open up here. The peak, I'm sure, is completely bald. It's just tough to decide what to do right now.
Here's the trail. It goes up here. I'm heading on towards the peak and if I run out of water I'm just going to deal with it then. Yeah, and it's chilly. Chilly up here. Well, now there's hail coming down and it's starting to stick over there. It's getting messy up here. I stopped to get my rain pants on. Yeah, and there's some thunder and lightning. Still going. I don't know why it's crazy. And here's another big one coming this way. I mean, it's truly stunning up here right now. Seeing the, the peaks light up over here. And this is the drainage I came up just down here, curling around. I'd considered backtracking a little bit to set up a camp in the trees. I don't know, I just, I just decided to keep walking. And the trail's good. Well used. I'm edging towards these trees here to see if there's some sanctuary, possibly for my tent. I might have something here. I'm not sure I want to commit to pitching the tent. And what I feel is this trail comes to a summit and I don't want to be on it if something like this comes in. Okay, this is pretty fantastic here. There's the peak. I can see the trail going to it. Real simple. Okay, I've done most of the climbing. And from there, it, it drops. And this wind is biting. It's cold. It's a great little sanctuary down here from the wind. I almost feel I need to decide real quick with this cloud over here and this. Okay, real quick, I, I kind of treated my, my bed area. It was all full of this hail, and so I grabbed some of these pine needles also to, to, to put down as a bedding. This is just going to be how it is. If I'm lucky, there'll be a sunbreak or two later, and I can dry some of the stuff out. Here we go, sunbreak number one. Look, and it's all, it's gray everywhere else. And here, this is a miracle right here. Everything in here is going to be dry and I'll be nice and warm and toasty in here when I get the sleeping bag and everything set up. What, what a fantastic day, really. I mean, to, 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 to bubble up out of this murk into this, you know, placid setting up here 
is just phenomenal. I I can't hardly explain the joy right now to be here. I just phenomenal. Here I am again looking at the wilderness. And here's something that uh, I don't see that much. And it's just been sitting here drying in the sun. It's an antler rack. Look at bleached white. Oh, it's a big one too, look. Oh, that's that's from an elk for sure oh boy look at that this is uh, it's pretty stunning to find this and you have to you have to know that nobody else comes around up here see how long it's been in the Sun Very tempting to keep it. It's not that awful heavy. You just have to carry it the rest of the way. Yeah, quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a break. It rained for an hour and a half, maybe. And I've just been here in this bag. My hands are cold. They've been cold ever since I got into the tent. My toes are cold. I just made some tea. I finished it. And uh, it did warm my, my body up. I, I needed that. I'm hearing some big thundering, rolling, far off. I mean, it is heavy thunder. Uh, I guess lucky it's not here. And for a while, just beyond these rocks is the drop-off. <coughs> and the wind was coming over it so hard and strong it sounded like I was at the ocean. It was intense. Well, it's making me rethink this, this, this loop. Uh, I just, I just have a, a strong feeling those trails are just going to disappear. So this is, this is what I'm going to do continue on along the ridge top tomorrow I have plenty of water for this being that it's so cold and wet out here I've, I've hardly used any water
Yeah. Out for the warm up makes a huge difference. Just to come out and sit in the sun, even even though it's chilly up here. This is the the wall I'm hiding behind. My tent is down there. It's in the shade. It's gonna be cold to go back to. So I'm up here just with everything. The views are spectacular. There was uh, something interesting just around the, the bend. You can see the trail here. As I was coming through, it was, it was raining lightly, but there's a grouping of trees, maybe the, these here, and I saw what looked like a tail kind of just disappear into the bushes. I have to think it was a cat cougar. A lot of cat signs up here. You know, the, the kills, kills bones, you know, the, the baby elk that we saw. Easy prey for, for a hardy cougar. And I'm pretty sure there's one down in here somewhere. And then this is, uh, this is a fantastic spot here. Look at, it's just like this plateau with trees. I guess if you haven't realized by now, I like being high up with far reaching views. It just it just feels like you know you, you, you climb up and you earn the the, the, the alpine s setting that you know that uh, it's like so alien to our lifestyles to, to just come up here and be part of it for a while it's just it's, it's so rewarding for me in there. Elk. Yeah, look. Probably 20 or so. Man, I need that. And it's a great bit of motivation. I'm planning to hike to the lake basin. And camp there. We'll see how the day progresses. My guess is that it's going to be very similar to yesterday. Maybe not so intense though. Uh, but I think for the next two days, there will be afternoon rain and uh, possibly thunderstorms. So this is good, good news. But the other thing, which is leaning against this down tree, is the, uh, the elk antler. I intend to keep that. And so... I'm, I'm going to stash it here and come back and get it on my way back tomorrow. So the loop idea is canceled. And uh, I'm okay with that. I might have a better idea of the, the, the trail network when I get over to the uh, lake basin. Just to, to have an idea. The hard thing about 
being in the rain and the cold is that every drop of rain is cumulative, whether it's on me or my gear or my tent. And being cold and wet as my person, everything I touch that's cold and wet just makes me colder and wetter. Yeah, this motivation, however long I needed. Yeah, I've got a nice dry pack. Everything in there is dry. Uh, I've got a great pack now, a great fill. There's tons of room. The rain jacket fits inside now. I'm not carrying the bear can. Uh, my sleeping bag and clothing are on the bottom. Food, rain jacket, body stuff, pots, my, my pot and stove, uh, map, toilet paper, reading book. Camera goes here and the water on top. Uh, you'll see I'm also carrying the air horn in my pocket again on this trip. Surprisingly, I had to pull it out of the backpack last night. It was a, a strange occurrence. I woke up thinking there was a mouse trying to get at my food. So I made a bit of noise, slapped the bag, or the slapped the tent. And uh, somewhere over in here, there was a, a deep uh, growl, like a <sighs> And uh, after waking up, situating my, my stuff, making a little noise with the plastic, again, the growl from over, over in here. And in my opinion, uh, it was a bear in the middle of the night, cruising around, probably smelled my stuff, and, uh, you know, thankfully, he didn't get any closer. One more thing to point on, and this is the, the, the elk antler, which is, it's huge, you know, and this is, this is a, 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 a close combat item in my opinion you've got five bone strong um, you know tips for uh, for stabbing and they're not necessarily sharp but they they would puncture they would puncture a human uh, for sure cat probably Maybe not to go through a bear hide, but, you know, directed at its face, you know, it might just be enough to, 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 to keep it at bay. And I know that I might only get one or two shots, but holding the item like this, I've got, you know, five points of direction to, to, to aim this thing. Here in this, this draw here is another trail going this way and a more well-worn trail going this way and I just scared the elk away they were uh, overnight up in this area here and they all ran around the side I didn't see any males though Yeah, 
fabulous right here. I'm up in this saddle and of course big gray skies that uh, you know I'm just at the edge of. Okay this this is probably Herd Peak or close to it H-E-R-D 98.60 is the height and I'm just gonna kind of cruise down this range I expect three miles and interestingly the distance perceived is kind of askew you see the trail here I was somewhere in those trees over here it doesn't look far but uh, that's a mile and then another mile down to where I started yesterday and then uh, two more miles down to the motorcycle Wow, it's pretty amazing up here. Quite exposed to any strikes that might occur. And it's just a chance I'm taking. I have to keep going now. And this is about what I expected. All right, here I'm on this faint trail. The, the focal point of that trail this whole time was the peak. And I don't see any other trail going anywhere down these moraines. I'm not sure what to do now. These storms are just going to drop any second. And I want it to be on my way to the next water. There's not much cover. Hard to say. Really hard to say. I can see back there a collection of trees indicating water. But that's a long journey from here. Rounding the corner here towards the trees. There's that tarn over there. Down here is a strong indication of some water that dark green color. Just a few seconds later I'm looking at this. It does flatten out in here and it looks like there's some nice grass. I'm gonna look right here and it's it's chilly. It's cold. It's you know almost a hypothermic cold right now that I'm experiencing it's yeah it's it's sloped this way I could make something work I think here going up this way and now I guess I'm going down to look for water I'm gonna set the pack here Definite animal zone in here. Sleeping spot, antler, scratching. I'm really just tempted to set up somewhere out away from the trees and the grass. There is some standing water down here. And a tiny bit in here. I don't have a cup per se, but what I'm thinking is I might be able to use this horn to, to scoop up water into these bladders. It's, it's the only thing I've got right now. Very arduous uh, 
but it's working and I'll get my water. Oh, half a liter so far. And sometimes in these cases, you'll need to fashion a, a dipping spot. And you don't want to disturb the bottom because you'll kick up a lot of debris. But here, here it's flowing very slightly below those standing water spots. And this is just going to have to do. Okay, I've got the tent set up and I've got two new full liters of water from down at that spring down there, which is uh, it's pretty amazing. I'm real, real happy to have that water. And uh, I just found a, a nice flat grassy spot around this sage here. And I wanted to find some low wind block uh, so the wind doesn't creep under the rain fly if it gets uh, breezy later. And so there have been some sun breaks but still these lingering gray clouds everywhere. They're gonna break loose sometime. Uh, so I'll have everything in the tent nice and dry. It'll be a dry setup as opposed to yesterday. And this is, this is the extent of my foray into the Jim McClure Jerry Peak Wilderness. Yeah, regardless, this is uh, this is nice. I'm I'm happy with this. You know, foray into this location. These these bald sage hills are rather spectacular just to admire. I've got a nice distant view of. Uh, the Lost River Range. It's going to be really hard to see now, but uh, I've even got a, a view of Bora Peak. I'm thinking that this one over here that uh, is at the end of this range here is Jerry Peak, but I'll get the map out and take a look. I wanted to recount on some instances that occurred and I think they're all cougar related. First, the, uh, the cow and the calf elk r running full speed through that hail. I doubt that the hail was frightening them like that because my guess is they see it quite often. All right, so my guess is there was a cat after them or stalking them or something because no later than you know 20 minutes later I see this mysterious tail go into the bushes okay last night uh, as I was going to sleep I hear this very stealthy uh, footfall creeping uh, around the tent in my opinion, it was a cat. And so I said, hey, man, you're getting too close. Uh, you know, chill out. This is my zone. Back off. Whatever. And then we hear the growl, the guttural kind of uh, growling, which I haven't seen any bear signs, but tons of cat signs. So I think all, all four of those instances were related and where I had set my camp was very close to where the first two occurred.
here it is day four and uh, I would have never expected this during the first week of August uh, this this moisture is just gonna cycle in these mountains for di for days and when I came out of the tent I couldn't see the end of this little knoll here this the, the end of this butte here and I said to myself line of sight hiking huh <laughs> oh it's cold now I've got all my top layers on and I just put these knee braces on I'm so thankful I have those the only thing wet with my gear is my rain fly and yes I'll be getting out of these mountains after my coffee and breakfast and from here it's really a no-brainer all set to go this is where I was sleeping I slept hard and I slept well uh, temperatures inside the tent this morning uh, was 45 degrees that's with everything bundled up that thermometer was all wrapped up so it uh, was probably 40 out here last night and there's been uh, a few uh, breaks with some blue like here so we'll see some sun here within the, an hour or two and I just have to go up to the top and go that way real spooky up here in this mist and I just was climbing steadily through here and a mistake that I made yesterday was to take that lower trail at the top looking at the map I realized the trail was at the very top well worn here it is I'm at the top and I'm gonna follow it this way and that's okay sometimes sometimes you come out here to learn about places for the next time you come back looks like I'm dropping down out of it such a weird place to be up there and I have the trail no problem going back and look over here the blue sky under the edge of these clouds it might just be a great day I have my memento just had a break here's my marker and here's the trail back down about uh, two miles maybe an hour and back into the trees pretty magical to come down out of the alpine tundra moraines into the forest like this. Everything's good down here. Thinking that's going to work out. And uh, what an adventure. That was uh, not what I planned, not what I expected, but uh, probably about 10 miles. And my guess is 5,000 feet elevation change. Toolbox Creek.